Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. So today I wanna to talk about getting a jump on spring. Well, I thought about this because the weather seems to be getting nicer. Hopefully the snow is not coming back, but we all know being here in Cleveland, in Ohio, the snow come, happens to fall back here in like in March and early April sometimes. <laughs> but, um, but this nice weather out there it's definitely getting me in the the uh, mindset of spring is coming and we got to get ready. So I'm going to give you a couple predictions. My own prediction, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball of, of uh, exactly what's going to happen with the real estate market, but I do have ideas and I do have some experience. But uh, And I'm going to tell you some of the things, but I can't guarantee it. This is my disclaimer, but it's good stuff. And then I'm going to give you three things that you only need to do once. Three things that you only have to do once to be make 2021 a very successful year. So first, predictions of what's going to happen this spring. Outside of inventory, of where inventory is, there's going to be a lot of buyers out there. Reason being spring, there's always buyers. They want to get in before summer, or at least before the end of summer. So spring is always traditionally busy. I think this year it's going to be just as busy, but we hope there'll be houses out there. Spring, or the spring season, <clears throat> might move, might shift closer to into summer, end of summer, because of what's going on with COVID and uh, more people getting vaccines and, and things opening back up and people feel more comfortable. I see it already. So it, I think a lot of people are going to finally get off the fence of buying and or selling. And I've been telling this to many agents out there uh, that, uh, especially my coaching agents and agents out there, they're always asking me, you know, what do you think? You know, Is this gonna be a good year, bad year? You know, of course, this time last year, we had no idea where things were going. So same with this year. But uh, what I've seen is no matter what happens in the economy, good or bad, or what's happening out there, sometimes makes people move. But I think this last year with COVID, a lot of people, that's why our inventory is low, or one of the reasons why our inventory is low is because people are scared to move right now. A lot of people are not sure about their jobs, not sure just safety uh, and things like that because they should want to move because this is the time and the uh, houses are selling way over asking price. Way over asking price. I've never seen some houses sell this quickly. Way over asking price. Multiple, you know, I've had ages 20, 25 offers on a property this, the first day it's on the market. So that should get sellers moving. They're like, this is the time to sell. Also, interest rates that are going to start creeping up a little bit. They're at historic lows. They're, they're going to creep up a little bit no matter how low the interest rates are. When they start creeping up a little bit or when they start moving up a lot, guess what? Spoiler alert, sometime between now and the future, they're going to go up a lot. <laughs> not Hopefully not right away, but they're going to go up a lot. That's just a cyclical world of finance and real estate. But... Uh, when they go up, move, makes people move. They're like, oh, got to get, got to get that house now. I'm not waiting for the bottom lowest rates anymore. So that gets people moving also uh, with the rates. Also, I hear this from ages. Oh no, the rates are going up. Real estate's going to slow down. It doesn't. It doesn't. There, there's no one there. Let me see. Very few people are out there going, oh, the interest rates, three and a half, not three and a quarter, or four, not three, and I'm not, I'm not going to buy a house now. No, that doesn't happen that way. Just when they're lower, usually there's a little bit more. <clears throat> Sorry, I do not know the exact statistics of exactly how many percentage when interest rates are lower, people make the, the shift, but Again, it just gets people moving when the rates go up. It, the real estate market always goes. Because I've heard from a few agents, oh my God, the rates are going to go up. Is there going to be like very little market like next year if the rates are really high or two years from now? 
I've been through all types of markets in almost 30 years in real estate. There's always real estate moving. And the great thing, and I've said this before about uh, Northeast Ohio and Ohio in general, is guess what? We're not the vacation capital of the world. We're not the retirement capital of the world, sorry to say. And we're, we don't have a lot, a lot of industry booming, like coming in, like all of a sudden company after company after company after company is coming in here and more and more people have to move here. But let me tell you. All of what I said, I feel, my personal opinion, that's a good thing because our market is steady with usually people buying and selling because they need a bigger house, smaller house, downsizing. They just moved to the area, just a normal s cycle of people moving the area. It's it's going to uh, it just it, when the economy is horrible, then people stop buying vacation homes and people stop buying uh, uh, retirement homes and they wait because their their stocks are down and they wait to buy. We don't have that kind of thing, you know, the way ups and way down. So uh, we do have ups and downs, but not as bad as some other areas. So I think that's a good thing. So the point I'm getting at is there's always a piece to the pie. There's always a piece of a real estate pie that you could get no matter what, no matter if the economy is bad, good, uh, the uh, real estate is up this year from last year. There's always a piece of the puzzle I've had or a piece of the pie. I've had agents that do great in down markets and bad in good markets and vice versa. So, so the point I'm getting at with this is the spring is coming. It's time to jump on this now. Also, this is the time that people are talking about real estate all over every everybody I run into uh, or talk to wants to talk real estate. They want to go, oh my God, my neighbor down the street sold his house in a day, and I checked, and my house is better than that. Oh, what's happening? People are talking about it because they're always talking about interest rates on the news or things that are going on. They're talking about how the inventory is low on the nightly news or uh, your search of news online. There's usually an article in there somewhere about real estate. So this is, uh, I'm going to give you the three things, and that point uh, is going to be very important in a minute here. I'm going to give you three things that you only need to do once. But here's the catch. You're like, what's the three things that I only have to do once to be successful this year and in real estate in general over your careers? There, here's the three things. But these one things you got to do consistently. <laughs> That's it. you got to keep doing them. It's kind of, and I bring this up, it's kind of like, you know, I want to uh, get healthy, lose some weight, get uh, get in shape. You can't do it once. You can't go, I ate healthy today, went to the gym today. Well, now I'm healthy. That doesn't work that way. And same with real estate, building your business. So here are those three things. One, one thing you do, one hour a day, prospecting. One hour a day, that's all you need. I mean, if you could do more, great, but don't burn yourself out. One power hour, as I use a Tom Ferry term, of rec or, uh, of prospecting and getting out there and, f and finding buyers and sellers and, and building relationships with people. Because back to what I said, this is something people want to talk about. So you've, you have a, write a whole list of things of what you should be talking to people about. And if these are people in your farm area or your sphere, you got to know something about their market. Tell them something new. Tell them like five houses sold in that area. Uh, tell them uh, you know the, the twenty thousand over asking. Whatever. There's always news going on in the market about real estate. What's been happening? Get on the MLS. Take a look. Do do a little bit of research before you start making your prospecting calls. So uh, one is do one hour of prospecting a day. Two. Open houses. If you don't have listings, contact your office, just like our office here, Central Twenty One Home Star, Central Twenty One Home Star agent. You can go right onto the MLS, search all of our listings. They're with our office. We'll connect you with an agent. You take a look at what listings you might want to do an open house for, and we'll connect you with the agent to see if those sellers would like to do an open house. People want to see it again. I know it's COVID. People are out there, but guess what? If you, if you feel safe enough and you do it safe enough and you're out there and those people come to that house, they are pretty motivated people or nosy people, one of the two. So if you have the time, open houses are still 
working. There's still people, agents having open houses, especially in a in a market that might have sold 50 houses in the last six months and there's only two on, on the market. Guess what? People will come and uh, it'll be marketed online. You can put signs out. So other agents could do open house. They can't, in our office, Central One Homes, I can't guarantee the house you want, the agent uh, will, uh, or the seller will want it, but at least it's you could do some research on that. You should be doing an open house, one open house a week, or on average of four or five a month, so you could do two in a day. So take, take uh, two Sundays and do one to three, three to five, you know, or obviously you need a little time to go back and forth, but something you could do 12 to two, three to five. You could do two open houses in a day. It's a half a day. Bring your phone with you. Do something if no one shows up. But if you're not there, you know, if you don't try, you won't have it. And I, even though some of those listings have been sitting a while, it's still the inventory is so low. I believe people are still coming out there. Also, while you're out there, you can do some social media. So people are sitting on their phones in your sphere. If they're on your Facebook or Instagram or whatever you're using or want, you're at an open house. You're showing people you're working. You're there. Hey, come check out my open house. Come uh, visit me. Uh, look what I'm doing. It shows that you're doing something on a Sunday when people are relaxing or doing whatever they're flipping through there, I think you're going to get a lot uh, of views on your social media on that. So do open houses. And then three, one thing you need to do is try to follow up with every lead, anybody that you think might be moving, anybody in your sphere that could be possibly uh, a good uh, cl a good fit for a, a new home or selling their home, you'd be following up with them once a month. Once a month because people are making their decision. How many of us, any agent watching this, have been in the business a while? How many of us have gone, oh, these people said six months from now they would move. I'm following up five months and they follow up five months from now, found that they bought a house last month. So I'm talking about anybody. Obviously, you should. You, every single person in your database should be on a schedule. One week, one month, one a quarter, a half a year, a year, something. You should. Everybody should be on a list. Not everybody's the same, and you should be moving some of these people up to once a month of what's going on in their market. Back to what I said earlier, you could, you always have something to talk to them about of what's going on. If you want to do a little research, look look at what's happening on their social media. If they're on your social media, there's always something within a month, hopefully some of this active on social media, that you can bring up. So uh, I, do, I do that with agents. I, I try to be up to date what they're doing as much as possible, Century, Century 21 Homestar agents. So what do I use? Facebook. So when I'm talking to agents, I go, wow, I just saw that you had an anniversary or a birthday or your your, your uh, son just graduated or, or things like that. So there's you always, depending on how much time you want to put into it, there's always something to talk about because that's a lot of times what agents say. I don't know what to say every month. You know, it could be a quick text, say, hey, can I call you and explain this? There's different ways. You know, I don't want to go into a whole video about that, but I could help you, uh, help you figure out what's best to reach out to people while you're prospecting, calling, texting, emailing, different things to make it less painful for you and open the door uh, for them too. So those three things, again, one day of one hour of prospecting, Try to do an average of one open house a week or you know, four or five a month if you can. Uh, and uh, three is one follow-up every month with anybody that you think might be moving this year or something life-changing. If you know someone's got a new job, if you know someone that you know just had a baby, someone that got married, someone's retired, someone, you know, I'm sorry to, to, to say that the bad things in life, someone lost a parent or a relative, and you can reach out to them that you're there to help. Obviously, you don't want to be like a uh, a ambulance chaser, but you can let them know that you're there to help if they need yeah, need to obviously there's ways you have to you know make sure on an emotional side of things opening up that door uh, very carefully so uh, that's it for today just ideas get to spring right now it's gonna be busy 
things are out there. People are out there. It's going to get busier, and I'll, I'll jump one more year ahead. I feel that next year in real estate is going to be just as busy or busier because the coronavirus hopefully is under control and people are back to, to normal and people are going to finally see I don't have to go back to my job in the office or not as often I want to move. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been laid off or I've been on furlough for X amount of days. I'm not getting my job back. Unfortunately, there's going to be people like that and they have to move. Also, there's going to be people with parents and grandparents that that have they've been pushing off because of safety that they been you know need to go into a retirement home or or downsize, but they didn't want to move. There's going to be a lot of those people too that are saying, "Now it's safe. Let's get out there. Let's downsize. Let's move. Let's move to Florida. Let's uh, go to a retirement home, 55 and over community." There's going to be a lot of those people too. So it's just going to get busier, in my opinion. Hopefully, my predictions are correct for the rest of this year and next year but get to it now you know the early bird catches the worm start calling the people because there's other people other agents calling they know other people they see other ads and whoever's uh top of mind first when they're ready usually gets that client and gets that customer so that's it for today have a great wednesday of another great topic tomorrow at 12 on thursday see ya have a good day everyone bye bye